The 2023 freshman quarterback class had a lot of big time names and a lot of guys who got to see the field early on. Guys such as Nico Yamilieva, Dante Moore, Jackson Arnold, Jaden Rashada, Avery Johnson, and Lincoln Keenholz all got action during the 2023 season. And while there were plenty of big time names in the 23 class, there may not be a more underrated player than Lenora Sellers. South Carolina has had pretty good luck at the quarterback spot over the last few years, and most recently, they just salvaged Spencer Rattler's career, and now he's likely headed to the NFL. While Rattler was great for them last year, South Carolina fans are super excited for their freshman quarterback, Lenora Sellers. He played in a couple of games last year, dazzled the crowd, and now will likely take over as a starting quarterback in 2024. He'll battle it out with a couple of incumbent players and transfers, but at the end of the day, I think Lenora Sellers is going to be the next great South Carolina quarterback, and he has all the tools to put the SEC and college football world on notice. Today, we're going to talk about who this guy is. We're going to talk about how he went from a random three-star athlete to one of the top high school quarterback recruits in the class of 2023, why everyone is so high on the 18-year-old kid, and just how good he could be for the Gamecocks. But before we get started, if you're a big college football fan, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you want to support my work, and let me know what other player I should preview for the 2024 season. It's crazy saying 2024 season, but here we are. Now let's go ahead and get started and talk about Lenoris Sellers. So one of the first things you're going to notice about Lenoris is his glasses. He already has an iconic look, and he's already become a fan favorite for South Carolina. But outside of the Gamecocks fan base, not many people had heard of him, even when he was a star at South Florence High School. Obviously, he was from Florence, South Carolina, and while I can't find much about his early years and his story, he was apparently the next big thing while he was there. As a sophomore, he starred in three sports, as he also played basketball and soccer, and was insane on the pitch, scoring 19 goals his sophomore season. In the classroom, he also had a 4.0 GPA, and he was the quarterback of the team, so he really had everything going for him. By the time he was a sophomore, he was already considered a high major talent, as college scouts were looking at him. As a sophomore, he ended up throwing for over 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns, and had over 600 yards and 13 scores on the ground. From there, he would choose where he would play football, as he committed to Virginia on July 24th, 2021, and ended up picking them over the Virginia Tech Hokies, Washington State, App State, and Georgia State. This was a pretty big get for Bronco Mendenhall, but after he retired from Virginia, his offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach would both leave for Syracuse. The OC was Robert Nay, and he was one of the better coordinators in college football at the time, so when they left for Syracuse, Sellers decided it was best for him to decommit. Pretty quickly, everyone knew where Sellers was going to go, as he later committed to Syracuse, and according to 24-7 Sports, at the time, he was the number 32 quarterback and a three-star player. He was both the first and highest ranked player in Syracuse's 2023 class, and his stock would only go up. As I said, he was injured mostly during his junior season, but during his senior year, he went off. He threw for just under 3,000 yards while completing 58% of his passes, and he threw for 45 touchdowns. He also ran for 1,300 yards and 7 scores, and in one game, he actually had 9 touchdowns. And all that came in just one half of football. While Orange fans were super excited for Sellers, everyone knew something was brewing behind the scenes. Florence was not too far from Columbia, and with the Gamecocks not having a quarterback signed in 2023, they eventually decided to make a major push and would try to flip him. Apparently, there were two main reasons why he'd end up flipping to South Carolina, as one was their new offensive coordinator hire, and the other was the proximity to home. Coach Beamer and the staff threw the kitchen sink at him, and after being committed to both Syracuse and Virginia, he eventually decided to sign with the Gamecocks. Why did he choose South Carolina? Well, it was quite simple. He said, quote, They want me to help with the turnaround and to be a playmaker for them. It was the coaches, the people around me, and the players that are going there, and I trust those guys. Also, being able to be in touch with my family whenever, and just being an hour down the road was big. If anything happens, I can get in my car and drive home. So yeah, the home state kid ended up flipping to South Carolina, and they were excited because he had just won Mr. Football. In a short period of time, he decommitted from Syracuse, signed up South Carolina, and enrolled on campus in January. Scouts were pretty excited for Sellers, as he was one of the more underrated players in the class of 2023. One said, quote, he has a stocky frame, but he has enough athleticism to move against SEC defenders, and he may not be able to run away from defensive backs, but he can use his feet to extend plays and find receivers downfield. I know it's cliche, but he was a typical quarterback who could pretty much do anything on the field. According to the 24-7 Sports Composite, Sellers was a four-star recruit, the number 17 quarterback, and the 249th best player in the class of 2023. So, how would he end up doing at South Carolina? 
Well, at first you'd have to sit behind a logjam of quarterbacks. At the time, there were five other guys on the roster, which included Spencer Rattler, who was using his extra year of eligibility, and then four other scholarship quarterbacks, all of which were decently highly recruited. Luke Doty was one of the top quarterbacks in his class, Colton Gothier had experience on the roster, and both Tanner Bailey and Braden Davis were on the roster, and they were at one time both four-star recruits. There was a lot of talent in South Carolina's quarterback room, and they also had to carry on Joyner, who was a quarterback who moved to receiver. So he would really have to battle to get playing time. Except, he would end up playing in their spring game, and there was already a ton of height. He had a 50-yard completion, and ended up going 3 of 8 for 66 yards, and had a couple of great running plays as well. Coach Beamer said, quote, Lenoris came in as a true freshman, showed great poise, and did some really good things. But in the mainstream world when talking about South Carolina, everyone was talking about Spencer Rattler. He was back for his final year, had five-star status, and was hoping to play his way into the NFL. Still though, it didn't stop the seller's hype train. In early September, we found out just how much potential he had. Late in the game against Furman, which was a blowout, Sellers ended up running to the right and threw a 50-yard bomb for a touchdown pass. This was the first touchdown of his career, and everyone in williams Bryce Stadium was amazed at what they had just witnessed. Better yet, this wasn't even supposed to happen. According to Sellers, he was supposed to run and take the yardage that the defense was giving him, but instead, he felt he could make the throw and had confidence in himself and made a highlight play. He also later found Nick Harbour for a touchdown, and after the Furman game, there were many people wondering how they could keep the guy off the field. But at the time, Rattler was one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC, and also was the most accurate quarterback in the conference, so there was absolutely no reason to bench him. But many were excited to see what Sellers could end up doing, and apparently all along the name of the game for Sellers though was confidence. Beamer said he was the most confident player on the roster, always believed in himself, and trusted his teammates. That is the exact kind of traits you need in a quarterback, and he has all the potential and talent and skill set to be the next big thing for the Gamecocks. As Rattler's now preparing for the NFL, Shane Beamer is looking ahead to 2024, and there'll be a couple of good options at the quarterback position for them. In the portal, they ended up reaching out to both KJ Jefferson and Malik Murphy, but Jefferson ended up going from Arkansas to UCF, and Murphy went from Texas to Duke. They whiffed on their top two targets, so they settled for, in my opinion, a third tier option, and that was quarterback Robbie Ashford. He started out his career at Oregon, and ended up starting on and off the last two years for Auburn, and while he is pretty athletic, he doesn't have the greatest track record, and the only leg I give him on Sellers is that he does have SEC starting experience. It's no knock on Ashford though, he is a decent player. So why exactly is everybody so high on him? I mean, for the most part, no one knows who this guy is. He's still 18 years old, and only really appeared in two games. That is the key though, he had very little time on the field and showed that much potential. Going back to that Furman game, he completed all four of his passes for 86 yards and two touchdowns, one of which was that perfectly placed 60-yard pass, and that was his first action in college football ever. He also showed the ability to go on the ground, as against Vanderbilt, he ran the ball one time for a 36-yard touchdown. When Sellers got on the field, he made big plays, didn't turn it over, and looked extremely confident. That is exactly what Coach Beamer is looking for for running the offense, and in my opinion, there's much more of a reason to go with Sellers than a guy like Ashford. So in my opinion, it's time to go full speed ahead with Sellers, and the only way Ashford should get on the field is in trick situations or if Sellers gets hurt. I think Ashford is a good backup option who should help develop Lenoris, and I think South Carolina needs to go all in on him. In terms of 2023 high school recruits who could have a huge impact this fall, I think one of the top young connections could be Lenora Sellers and their five-star wide receiver, Nicholas Harbour. Harbour was the most insane athlete from the 2023 recruiting class, and Sellers has the potential to be a top five quarterback from this class, in my opinion. He has a rocket for an arm, has extreme confidence, has the proper size, can both run and pass, and honestly, just has the look. Part of being a big-time quarterback is having that it factor, and maybe it's just me, but when the guy wears glasses underneath his helmet, it just makes me want to root for him. The last time we saw that was Rodrigo Blankenship, and he turned out pretty good, so I honestly think the sky is the limit for Lenoris. He was a late rising in-state player, and there's a reason why so many schools wanted him, and why he ended up getting on the field instead of three other experienced backups. We'll just have to wait and see, but I'm all aboard the Lenoris Sellers hype train, and I think he will be the next big thing for the Gamecocks. But what do you guys think? If you're a South Carolina fan, what do you think of the quarterback position? What do you think of his potential? And what player should I cover next for 2024? Be sure to check out all my other videos on the end screen, and I hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.